All right, just before I started filming this, I dropped this guitar on the floor. Look at that. Look at this. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, shit happens, I guess. everyone welcome to sunday with ola 169 okay let's uh, backtrack a little bit i did put this guitar on the table right here like this and then it dropped to the floor and uh, made this little damage and this take a look at that oh shit, oh, shit. bonus riff <laughs> be careful ola this is you know this is one of my favorite guitars and, you know it has a couple of dings here and there but now it's dinged for sure with that little thing right there. Huh? Great start to a great day. Am I gonna put it on the floor where I can step on it? Probably. You might be wondering, hey, Ola, what the f are you wearing? Why are you looking so freaking cool? It's because these things that I'm wearing, this little vest right here, these shoes. The reason why I'm wearing all this is because, you know, my mom bought these shoes for Christmas. I love them. Also, she made me this little vest. How about that? So I figured, like, let's, you know, honor mom by wearing this shit on a Sunday with Ola. Huh? With this, you know, knitted vest, I'm kind of setting the trend for 2024, no? Maybe this will be the, the shit next year. It's the last Sunday with Ola for 2023. Holy shit. Welcome, guys. Did you get anything cool for Christmas? I got these. I also got this ring from Louise that uh, is sort of like, it's called like a smart ring. So apparently it's smart. And, uh, you know, it it, 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 you know, it measures my temperature and uh, uh, my heart rate and shit and when I sleep and how I sleep. I mean, when you're getting older, you need shit like this, you know, a watch and things to, to uh, you know, check on you occasionally. So you're not fucking dead, <laughs> you know, so uh, cool couple of gifts. I hope you guys got some good gifts, too. Uh, Son of a Fola 169. Hello, let's go. The news I meant, huh? Metallica among investors in $13.7 million funding round for artist to fan platform <clears throat> Medallion. I saw this article and I was like, uh, what the hell is this? Medallion, a direct artist to fan platform that enables white label fan experience and digitally native commerce for artists has closed $30 million of a series of funding. The round was co-led by Dragonfly and Lightspeed Faction alongside technology as so a Coinbase Coinbase, okay, so crypto, 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 churning group, crypto, as well as the music industry investor, including Bill Silva and him, like for a <sighs> lot of people. Okay, okay. Medallion intends to use this capital to accelerate an ambitious technical roadmap to deliver net new revenue opportunities for artists and immersive experiences for community members around pivotal, pivotal artist moments. These are too long of sentences for being, you know, on New Year's Eve. I'm already, you know, I'm already fatigued. Medallion Power Communities quickly became artists' fastest growing community channel, attracting 86% more members than their Facebook groups, 161% more than Reddit, and 206% more than Discord. Huh? That sounds a little too good to be true. Maybe they sugarcoated these uh, figures a little bit. How can that be possible? I haven't heard about this thing. Uh, let's check out the website. What is this website? Artists only have direct relationships with a fraction. Okay. My guess is that they're trying to make sort of like an OnlyFans 
but not for porn, <laughs> you know, for musicians and artists. While this is good to have everything on a single platform, I think that most artists today have already sort of adapted themselves to the different platforms that are out there. I mean, for my, uh, my platform, my main platform is YouTube, obviously, and you know, you can become a member, and you can support, and then you go to Discord, and that's where you kind of interact with me and with others. And then, you know, you have Spotify for my music, you have, you know, my own web store for merch and stuff. So most artists, I think, have already sort of, you know, done this deal a little bit. So it's going to be really interesting seeing what they mean with this platform. Are they going to collect everything there? Will it be exclusive to this platform? For say the music, will it be exclusive to this platform? So the revenue from listening to the music, will be higher than with Spotify, for instance, or I don't think that Metallica is going to remove their shit from Spotify just to have it on, you know, another streaming platform, if this is a streaming platform or not. Maybe I should have read on. Um, you know, there's probably more to this text, but when reading it, it's just basically a big, big, it seems like it's a paid ad, a paid advertisement, so I'm not going to I'm not going to spend more time with this. Anyways, I'll check it out when it's out, okay? Cool. I didn't see this coming, but apparently Steven Carpenter of Deftones has a new Kiso signature guitar. What? Gotta check it out, man. Look at that. That is white. Fretboard is white. White. Yo, oh, it's Steph white, Ola. Oh. Uh, I'm here at uh, Park in San Diego doing our Dia de los Deftones event and uh, Okay, it's a headless guitar. Carpenter will continue to endorse ESP guitars alongside the new models, which come in snow and shadow variants, as well as 7-string, 8-string and left-hand configuration. So, this is something we see more and more of, is that, you know, several artists have several endorsements or signature guitars. So, like in this case, he has the ESP, Steph Carpenter guitars, and he also has now Kiesel guitars. Much like Devin Townsend, who also has a Kiesel signature guitar and a Framus signature gu guitar. And then you also have Metallica, and you know, the list goes on. Maybe this is becoming more and more of a thing that uh, brands don't really carry like exclusive contracts with uh, signature artists. Prices for Carpenter's Vader signature model starts from $3,500. It's a signature guitar. It's probably going to be full fledged, all the specs and all that. I imagine the pickups. You know, the Fishman Flown 8 pickups, that's at least like 600 bucks right there out of that whole equation. So, very cool. I would love to try one of these out. I never tried a headless Kiesel guitar before. All right, Mike Portnoy has entered the world of Drumio. If you have no idea what Drumio is, it's uh, basically uh, the YouTube platform or a platform for drummers out there. I mean, I don't normally speak too much about drums, but you know, I've been on that platform and that website uh, a couple of times watching people play some drums. And now Mike Portnoy joins in on Drumio and he starts by playing uh, Pull Me Under in the freaking video. So let's check it out. Look at him go! Dude, I'm just really excited that Mike Portnoy is back into Dream Theater. Uh, has me excited for a new album, and I definitely hope that he will challenge John Petrucci on, you know, writing the music, just like it should be, like back in the day, because I think that John has been unchallenged lately. I think this back and forth, you know, between Portnoy and Petrucci, I think that's good for the band. That's, that's gonna make the albums kick ass. Although so I'm really, I'm really just excited for new Dream Fitter material at this point. This video is pretty cool. He's talking about it. He's playing the song. And just the drum tone from this video is like, hell yeah. So good. I always love Mike Portnoy's uh, drum tone. He's getting a lot of slack from people and saying like, oh. You know, he... Uh, uh, but no, I always loved Mike Portnoy. A new study by UK academics saying the modern-day guitar virtuoso is torn between perfection and often authenticity and must be a cultural entrepreneur. Very interesting, because this segues into... a little bit into what I'm doing with my life, <laughs> which is not being... You know, the touring guitar player, I'm uh, the, the YouTube guitar player, basically. Herbs and Vallejo's studio yields some interesting conclusions about the evolution of the electric guitar virtuoso and attempts to understand how and why the role has changed since the pioneering players of the 1960s first defined the trope. In particular, it offers some insightful observations around the Catch-22 situation created by guitarist's concept of authenticity, not least in the tightrope walk 
that is guitar playing on social media. Guitarists appear to be caught in a paradox. They cannot merely publish a spontaneously produced, seemingly authentic video of their playing, yet neither can they afford to release anything less than perfect. If performance sets are perfect, guitarists must prove authentic authenticity or be accused of cheating. The study cites a 2019 allegation that Instagram guitarists were faking their technique with virtuosos including Manuel Gardner Fernandez and Sincado Charlie Robbins among the most prominent players to be accused and vindicated of fakery. What I think is the, the problem here, or if it's a, really a problem, but the, I agree with this. A lot of the Instagram guitar players out there, they're absolutely stinking flawless to the point where you're wondering like, hey, this almost sounds like Guitar Pro, or this is like, this sounds like it's edited somehow. And most of the times, I guess it is. But that doesn't take away anything from that the guitar player himself or herself is shit or anything like that. They probably can play it. It's just that when showcasing it, they're just, you know, they just want to put out their their best type of uh, performance. And I think people have become more uh, accepting of this format where you know, people are basically hacking their videos. I don't really mind people doing this as long as they feel good about themselves, you know, and that they actually can deliver when it's time to play live and shit like that. I always knew that this was a thing and a technique that's available to me. I mean, I'm using Logic and shit and, you know, when you record an album, that's one thing, you know, I can edit and cut shit in as long as I can, you know, practice it up and play it and perform it later. Now, I'm a little bit older. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm an older generation and, uh, uh, personally, I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I was like faking a performance or something like that on, on YouTube or on Instagram. But, you know, that's why I'm playing slow. Usually, you know, I'm, I'm playing at my level because if I edit something, I know that's over my level. I can't do it. Why would I do it? So I guess that's just a personal preference. For me personally, I, I just cannot do edit. You know, I want it to be live. I, I want people that are watching the video to know that it's, it's real and it's not faked. I just think that people are going to approve it more and more. You know, people want to be entertained. They want the, the best of the best. And people just, you know, the attention span is just too, too short, too narrow. This is also an appropriate reflection of one of the book's main conclusions that guitars are required to do more than ever. Guitars write, arrange, record, and produce their music in a do-it-yourself manner, often adding extra elements such as electronic beats, live electronics, and other form. They create artwork and animated videos for the song to run website. But, so basically, the guitarists themselves, they take care of their full product and their full output. And uh, that's the modern guitar player right there. And that part is definitely uh, me in that sense. I mean, I take control of my own shit, put it online, I sell it, you know, don't need any metal hands or anything like that. And I, that's definitely the future for a lot of guitar players. At least if you're not in an established band, you know, this is the way. This is the way. You can download this little thingy from this Guitar World uh, link that I'm probably not going to put in the description because I'm lazy. Also, last but not least, remember when I was talking about the KISS avatars? You know, we've all been waiting for the KISS avatars to, to, to become a thing so we can go and pay uh, to go to a show to see uh, virtual reality versions or, you know, avatars. We have been waiting for this, all of us. The sad news about this is that it's not going to happen until 2027. And, you know, jokes aside, I don't fucking care. So that means that I have to wait until 2027 to not buy a ticket to a KISS Avatar show. There you go. The news, everyone. Oh, Ola complaining about his back again. Ugh. Oh shit, even I'm getting tired of myself. No, but if you paid attention to my channel, you might have heard that uh, I'm suffering a lot from uh, back pain and that I can't sleep or can't sit. There's basically no position for me <laughs> where it doesn't hurt. And uh, that actually made me cancel my live streams. So, uh, complete bummer right there. Because obviously in my live stream room I have to sit. But I can't do that. But I have some excellent news, you guys. I purchased a standing desk for home. So I'm waiting for an IKEA gaming desk uh, that was 20% off. Uh, that's gonna be a standing desk so that I can do my live streams again. Hallelujah, holy shit. So in this Adventures with Ola, I'm gonna, you know, take all this down disassembly everything and build a new desk. Ikea will arrive today. You can't fall. Okay. 
Hör det. Hej, hej. Hej, hej. Du är så glad och gullig. Du är så glad och gullig. And maybe I can get a camera for Pex because she's always with me when we're doing the live streams. That's her spot right there. In typical Ola England manner, I forgot to. Oh shit! So in good Ola England manner, uh, you know, I forgot to do a time lapse of me putting together this new desk. You only get to see me put up the cable management. That's it, basically. No hard evidence of Ola actually doing anything. My little asshole, my little friend. Ah, my little asshole. I think that's the end of the manual right there. Yes! Success! All right, moment of truth. Holy shit! Let's go! All the way to the top, let's go! All right, let's try it. Oh. Heck yeah! That is so. Look, you can see my ass! Ah! And the dog, I think. Yes, hello. That's so cool. Alright. I think the first thing I need to put on here is my Evangelion mouse pad. Oh. Look at that. Sex in the house. All that's left is just I'm gonna. Put everything back. Maybe something like that. Ha! Huh. All right, I think I'm almost done with this. Take a look. Look at that! Beautiful! To be honest, it actually looks sicker with a black desk. I had a white one before. This looks more fitting. The good thing about cleaning up like this is because then you're uh, removing some of the stuff that you're not using anymore. You know, there's a bunch of cables down there that I didn't even use for anything. So now it's nice that I got that to, you know, clean that up and uh, make a very clean setup. Look at that, that looks great. Just don't pay attention to what's underneath the desk. This is a work in progress, guys, okay? And uh, I'm gonna fix it, okay? Here's my computer. I'm so happy with my computer. Uh, great. Looking good, what's up? And then I can do this. Look at that. So whenever, oh shit, that's gonna hit the computer. All right, <laughs> the, I have to fix that. No biggie, I got this, don't worry. <laughs> all right, so maybe now I can start streaming again. Uh, I still need to work up all the things and set you know, OBS up and all that, but maybe I can start streaming uh, very soon. So there you go, a little short adventures with Ola for you right there. Unboxing with Ola. So this is actually something I've been waiting for uh, for a little bit. Uh, I'm, you know, my, my ambition this year. I'm going to talk about my ambitions later. Is to, you know, I have my back pain right now and it's freaking terrible. I cannot sit. But my ambition is that in approximately one month I'm going to go to Nam and I'm going to perform at Nam. That's kind of like a goal of mine. But you know, I'm a little bit worried about the flight over there. That's 14 hours. It's a 14 hour flight and you know, I can't sit. I can't stand on a plane all the time. I'm a little hesitant if I'm gonna go to NAM or not. We just have to see, time will tell. When at NAM, I'm gonna perform at uh, a booth called... Uh, 
I don't remember what it's called, but it's X Vive. They've made some like wireless shit back in the day, and uh, you know, I was not completely convinced about the looks of these wireless things and the quality, but that was some time ago, man. And they have new products now. So I figured, like, okay, if I'm gonna perform at their booth, maybe, you know, I can get some of their stuff and get, uh, acc you know, uh, acclimatized, acclimatized with them. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Shit, yeah. So, it's the. It's the same. This is what I used before. Oh, okay. Maybe there's something new about this, but this I think this is the one that I had. But this it says U2 on it, uh, which I hope is not the band. But I guess it's like a, a, a second version of this uh, wireless thing right there. So I'll try that out. Oh, here it is. Okay, okay. I, I figured. So what I wanted to try out too was this in-ear. Uh, monitoring system and as you know when I do clinics before I showed you a setup of mine which was like a you know this pedal board with my stuff on it a chug pedal and an in-ear monitoring thing and an audio interface and I have a Sennheiser uh, wireless system that I use for touring with the Haunted for instance it's uh, it's incredible but it takes a little bit more space and I saw that X Vive have these in-ear monitor wireless system uh, that I figured I would try out. Always trying to kind of up my game when it comes to my, uh, you know, my clinic rigs or live rigs. So take a look at that. Okay, that is a small ass unit right there, but why is there an XLR on it? I'm not sure if I'm stupid in the head or not, but... In ear... Is this an output? This is a transmitter, but I mean, it's an XLR. I. You know, I figured there would be some kind of input on this thing so I could, you know, get my... my tracks out to this. I would much have preferred to have like a, you know, a, a line input on this so I can connect it to my audio interface. How am I gonna use this now? Okay, but this... Oh yeah, 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 this is something I'm also extremely excited about because this might actually help me out in the office. Sometimes, you know, I, you know, I pull a lot of cables here and there. Sometimes I, may, I might want to record something in the other room, for instance. But then, you know, I have to connect it to an audio interface and shit like that. I bought a small portable recording solution for this. But I figured they also have these wireless microphone transmitters. So basically you have a receiver and a transmitter like this. So you have a transmitter and a receiver that looks like this. You have one in the microphone and the other one in the interface. And there's a wireless microphone cable right there that also supports what I think plus 48. So you can phantom power a microphone with this transmitter. I thought that was pretty cool. What if I could have like a couple of these uh, and record wherever in this office? and still record here, to this desk and audio interface. I thought that was pretty cool. I'm actually looking forward to trying that out. So there you go, a bunch of wireless shit that I'm gonna try out. I'm gonna make a video of these, obviously. Uh, but I'm just not sure how I'm gonna use this. Guess I could use like a stereo TRS-2 XLR to this, maybe. And maybe I can route out the sound from my, from my audio interface for, me, for my in-ears. So... Mm, yeah, yeah. Unboxing with Ola. All right, I figured we would round up the year of 2023 with me mentioning my favorite metal album, my favorite movie, and my favorite video game of this year. So let's start with the music. My favorite album of 2023. I looked back into my playlist on Spotify and I checked what I listened the most to this year. And what I listened the most to this year was Cattle Decapitation. Man, this album is freaking incredible. Aphotic Doom. My top contender for 2023's best album that I've listened to the most. That's my pick right there. I think what I truly, truly love about Cal Decapitation is that they're mixing a lot of the, you know, the technical death metal that I was used to back during the 90s and beginning of the 2000s and bringing it to 2023. It also doesn't hurt that Ryan, the singer, can sing in so many different ways. It keeps it very, very fresh. And that's why Aphotic Doom is my album of 2023. Ha!
My movie of 2023. I've actually not seen too many movies uh, lately. And to be honest, movies suck ass nowadays, huh? But my pick of the year of 2023 is a Japanese movie. It's Godzilla Minus One. I went to watch this movie at the theaters at IMAX with my son. And it's the best Godzilla movie out there, in my opinion. It's freaking great. What I like about the Japanese Godzilla, you know, the Toho uh, uh, Godzilla, is that it's still trying to be sort of serious. It's trying to stay true to the original Godzilla movies from the past, you know, the, the first ones. Dude, this movie is absolutely incredible. Don't sleep on it. If you're a fan of like Monsterverse stuff like this and, uh, you know, it's a no-brainer. It's the best Godzilla movie out there, in my opinion. And then obviously next year there's going to be more Monsterverse movies, which is the, the US version of Godzilla. And you know, King Kong and shit like that. They're not as good, but they're okay. You know, they're okay. My game of the year of 2023 has to be Bramble the Mountain King. I talked about this game earlier, a couple of, you know, I think it was one month ago or something like that. Uh, this was not released in 2023, but it's the game that I enjoyed the most in 2023 because it became available on the Xbox Game Pass. It's a very eerie game about, you know, Scandinavian or Nordic lores. It's a beautiful story about, a, a you know, a, a brother and a sister, uh, Swedish, obviously. And it, obviously that's very important to me and, you know, comes close to my heart. But it's a great video game. It's not that hard at all. It's more of a one of these you sit and just chill and play it and it's done basically. But it's a really good storytelling game and uh, I can definitely recommend you to get that for 2023. The game that I played the most this year has actually been Red Dead Redemption 2. I just went back and played that for a while because you know, there's not really that many games that were, have been good this year. I didn't play Baldur's Gate 3 though, I must say, and I didn't play Spider-Man. So, but these are my picks that I of the games that I played. So there you go. So to top it off in the Sunday with Ola 169, I want to tell you guys about my New Year's resolutions for 2024. And uh, truth be told, you know, every year you say like, oh, I'm going to play more guitar. Every, every single year. It never fails. Play more guitar and then it doesn't happen. <laughs> but I actually have uh, a new New Year's resolution that uh, I'm going to honor. And that is to rehabilitate my back properly this year. I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to be calm, assertive and stay on target in regards to my rehabilitation because I want this shit to become better. I still can't sleep at night properly. You know, I wake up in the middle of the night with, with pain and shit. I have to make that disappear somehow. I show you guys my MRIs and all that and you know, it was confirmed it was a herniated disc as well as a couple of bulging discs. And I'm going to see a neurosurgeon in January now to talk about, you know, my possibilities and my options. Obviously, I'm not going to go for uh, surgery. You know, that's that, uh, that's a big no-no unless it's absolutely super necessary. But uh, I'm going to do everything in my power before that to become well anyways, you know, with uh, with uh, physiotherapy and, and uh, exercises and shit like that. So uh, that's my number one New Year's, year, uh, New Year's Eve resolution is just to do the right thing. Do the right thing. What else do I have to look forward to in uh, in 2024? Nam, obviously. I'm really hoping that I can go to Nam and perform my shit. It would serve as a really good break for me in all of this, you know, the back pain and all that. But I am a little bit worried about the flying part because that's going to involve a lot of sitting and that's where I get the most problems. Sitting down, laying down, that's where I get pain. So uh, I'm not so sure if I will be able to make it, but my ambition is that I'm going to Nam. I'm waiting for my Sonic the Hedgehog ESP guitar. When will it arrive? I'm super excited. I want it now, man. Also this summer I'm going to play a couple of festivals. I'm playing Sweden Rock. I'm also playing Hellfest, which is uh, one of the bigger festivals in Europe. So I'm really excited uh, for that. I'm playing that with The Haunted. Uh, for instance. And then, uh, yeah, there's a lot of things happening, a lot of things coming. I can't tell you too much about it because I don't like uh, spoiling any surprises, obviously. With that said, I want to say Happy New Year, guys. And thank you so much for this year of 2023. I thoroughly enjoy all the support you guys have given me and the team uh, throughout the year. It's been, you know, every time I read things from you guys, it's lifting my spirit a lot. And especially now, this past month, where I've been in freaking ass cheek pain. <laughs> it's really, it's really helping guys. So I just want to say that before I leave for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to support what we're doing, oldanglandshop.com. 
Happy New Year, guys. I'll see you next week. Oh, shit. Live stream tomorrow. I'm doing my first live stream. Uh, the Sunday with Ola Contender live stream. Because I got this new standing desk at home. Holy shit. I'm trying to, trying to get back into the groove, man. I'm really trying. Thank you for watching, guys. See ya.